Another darknet market bites the dust. So Andy, I've heard you got something for us about some takedowns on the dark web. I do, yeah. Uh, a bit of a joint effort. So we got the uh, German police, Europol, some agencies from the US, Netherlands, France, um, actually ended up seizing the servers for the dark web uh, marketplace known as the Wall Street Market. Nice. Pretty interesting. Yeah. So uh, what happened with this whole market, which is actually kind of interesting, it was, a, it was about a year and a half long investigation into it. And it all sort of culminated in uh, an exit scam, uh, yeah. which for those who don't know, an exit scam is where you basically take people's money and you don't give them what they're paying for, essentially. Oh yeah, you close down your market and anything that's in the balances for any of those accounts is, you take is now yours, yes. And that's exactly what they were doing. So the main wallets that they were using for payments, they were actually using a sort of an escrow system where users would pay into that wallet and then the vendors could actually pull out of it once the transaction had gone through. Mm -hmm. So there was some, you know, some uh, security there. What they were doing though is they were taking the balance of those wallets and they were shipping them off to different wallets. And while they were doing that, they were telling their users and vendors that there was maintenance going on and, you know, they're trying to fix it and whatnot. And given the recent trend of exit scamming, the, the user base, the vendor base weren't buying it. Another twist to this, though, is that the moderator, one of the moderators for the site actually ended up posting the credentials to get into the back end of the Wall Street market, as well as the IP of the actual market itself on Dread, which is a Reddit-like community. This, of course, means that you know anybody who sees that can actually log into the back end of the Wall Street market. Uh, so just a few days later, you were seeing errors on the site when you tried to hit it, and then it was just taken down altogether shortly after that. Wow. Uh, it later came to light that there were a few arrests that were made, which is pretty interesting, which is you know, good, it's kind of what you want to see uh, with that sort of thing. Um, ZDNet actually uh, speculated a little bit and said that it's possible, they were trying to figure out why you would exit scam, like what's the purpose of it, right? And they were saying is there was a different market that was actually uh, had, had announced that they were going to be closing down, so the dream, uh, dream market, I think that's yeah. what it's called. Um, they were they were announced they, they announced that they were going to close down soon, and so what happens is all those users actually have to go to other other markets, uh, and it causes a lot of attention for those other markets. Mm -hmm. So they thought, well, instead of taking in that influx of user base and attention, why don't we just you know get out get out okay. with, with as much money as they can? And they actually ended up pulling about fourteen million dollars worth of stolen crypto. So. From everything you've described so far, it sounds like this all could have happened in a vacuum. You know, people on the market, people trying to um, blackmail people on the market. Where does law enforcement fit into the big picture here? So, the, I mean, like I said, there was a there was a year and a half long investigation into this whole thing. Uh -huh. um, they knew the physical server location, which is in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. um, and that's where we were talking about the that joint effort between the German police, different U.S. agencies um, from France, Netherlands, Europol seized those servers and then the, the they market did is the taken down. So okay. they did seize those servers, uh, which means the marketplace is actually taken down entirely right now. Uh, unlike some other darknet markets, which are still up, mm -hmm. but are, you know, maybe maybe they're honeypots now. <laughs> you know, we don't know. Yeah. So. Interesting stuff, yeah. yeah. Always, always kind of wild to see how these things shake out. Especially that you've got like a takedown that seems to be almost coinciding with the internal collapse of the market itself and, and all that other stuff going on. So that's that's pretty wild. Yeah, a lot of, lot of stuff going on, definitely. Chris, what's your take? Yeah, it's been really interesting seeing the rise and fall of all those dark markets over the years. I mean, there's a Silk Road going down when the, the guy that's writing was asking for help on Stack Overflow to write a dark market and then getting caught. And then, as you mentioned, you know, the honeypot markets like Hansa being run by the Dutch police who are to trap people in there. So yeah, it's interesting. Um, I don't know what the total trade must be on these dark markets these days, but I would guess it's less than it used to be, given that there must be such a lack of trust now if you're one of the people on there. I mean, you don't know who on there is going to be law enforcement. You don't know if you're running the site or going to be law enforcement. So um, overall, I guess it's a, it's a win for the police. If you've got a site that's being potentially run by law enforcement and no one quite knows if that's the case or not, then no one really trusts that they can do business there. And hopefully that, that serves to shrink the size of the, the markets that are, that are out there.